In this video, we're going to cover some of the ways that you can share, collaborate, and distribute your Power BI reports across your business. We're going to look at some of the tools that are available to you within the Power BI service. And I'm also going to talk about my personal experience using all of these tools. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in Power BI, when we talk about sharing or collaborating, what we mean is sharing our reports that we've created to our wider team for collaboration, or maybe sharing it to our individual or group of users who will use it and gain some insights from these reports. And all of these sharing and collaborating features start with the Power BI service service, which is the web version of Power BI that you and your users can use to access reports without having to install any third party tools. It's all through the web. And all of the sharing and collaborating starts with the Power BI service, which is the sort of web version of Power BI. And this is where you typically publish your Power BI reports. The first thing that I'll cover is the collaboration, which is typically the case if you're working with sort of larger Power BI projects that require multiple developers to work on the same report. So here I have a report open in my Power BI desktop at the moment. It's a report that I created for a community challenge at the Data DNA. And uh, from here, typically the process, once you've built your report, is to click the publish button in order to publish these uh, this report into the service. Now, when you publish reports into the Power BI service, you typically have a few options. If you've never published before, you probably just have one, which is the My Workspace, which everyone has. But if you're collaborating with other developers and more users, you would typically create a workspace dedicated to that project. So think of workspaces as sort of containers. So it can contain reports, data sets, dashboards, scorecards, that sort of creates a logical grouping for all of those different components. And by the way, this this publishing option from Power BI Desktop is only available to those of you who have a Power BI account uh, set up already, which uh, you need to set up set up in advance. You'd know that if you've not signed up yet, I have a video covering how to sign up and get your own Power BI account just because it needs a work email for it to work for you. But once you have signed up and you have an account, there will be a sign in button here on the top right. So you just need to make sure that you're signed in so that the Power BI desktop will know which account to publish your reports into. And another thing that is important to know is that when you're publishing reports into the service, you typically won't need a paid license. You would need at least a free account in order to do that. But the problem is that you won't be able to share or collaborate with those reports that you publish into the service. So if you want to share it to your users or to your other team members, everyone in that chain needs to have a paid license, either a Power BI Pro or Premium in order to edit or view these reports. So let's move into the Power BI service here. And as you can see, if I click the workspaces here, I have a few workspaces that I've already set up for a few different things that uh, I would like to group them into. Everyone by default will get a My Workspace. So this is a kind of private workspace where, you know, you could publish your own reports um, just for yourself. You can give people access to those reports that you publish in this My Workspace uh, workspace. However, in my experience, I typically just use this to publish any tests, uh, reports, or dashboards that I would like to see and preview in the Power BI service. So it's more of like a testing run for me. But what I actually utilize is uh, using kind of shared workspaces. The shared workspaces just sort of make sure that uh, the report is accessible by other people other than yourself, um, and it's easier to collaborate that way. Another good thing of uh, using workspaces as a means to collaborate is that when you get into the uh, workspaces, you can actually control how your other team members are sort of interacting with the items that you have within that workspace. So workspaces have what we call sort of role based uh, permissions, which um, if you click manage access here within the workspace, you will have the ability to add people in this. So if I just type someone's name, for example, and you will have the ability to change their role, which 
kind of controls the sort of things that they can do in this workspace. Maybe you just want them to be able to view and interact with the reports, or maybe you want them to be able to publish or edit the reports within the workspace. This gives you the ability to control what they can do with the items within that workspace. When you're in the reports that you've published in the Power BI service, you will have this comments option available for you on the top right. And if you click that, this is one of the collaboration features available for you to, to work within the same reports across your different team members. So from here, when I clicked it, it opened up pane here on the right hand side that lets me add comments or tag people uh, based on what I've noticed. So let's take, for example, this report. Um, and let's say as I'm scrolling through all of these uh, different options here to look at, uh, you know, how price or rating affects sales i noticed that there's something weird there's nothing here at the moment but let's just say one of the values are highlighted when they're not you can simply go to the comments here on the right hand side and say uh, there is a problem with the discount visual here and if you type at you'll be able to tag people within your your business. So if I just tag this person, for example, it's just me um, here within my tenant and I hit post, you'll see that this comment will be in this pane. The user that we tagged will get an email or notification. And what's really cool about this feature is that um, let's just say, let's just put it back to how it was before. So now we have that comment that just stays there until we've resolved it. If you click the little bookmark icon next to it, it will take anyone who's looking at these comments directly into the view that the person who made the comment uh, was looking at. So of course, there are many different ways that you can do this and it's not really revolutionary in a sense, but it just makes that collaboration a lot quicker and easier sort of across your team members without coming out of the Power BI service. If you use Microsoft Teams, the Power Power BI service is fully integrated into Teams as an app. So you can install it as an app and view your Power BI service within that app in Microsoft Teams. So you'll get the full experience like uh, viewing your different workspaces, viewing your reports, uh, interacting with them without having to leave the familiar uh, window of Teams. Along with that, there was also a new feature that was released not so long ago that lets you add tabs for Power BI within Teams. What this means is that you can create and copy link from Power BI directly into the tabs that you have in Teams. And there's a lot of different capabilities and opportunities here, such as being able to see a page of a report or maybe just the scorecards. And the best thing is that you don't need to leave Teams in order to see those. So personally, I don't really use Teams with RBI, but I can see some use cases where it might be a good idea to do so, especially for those who are sort of more familiar and comfortable with using Teams rather than going to a sort of a separate web service for it. So when you share your reports um, across your business, you will notice that when you manage and create this link, you have this option to allow your recipients to build content with the data associated with this report. What this allows your users to do is allow them to tap into the data sets that makes up the data that you're showing in your report. So basically, it gives them the ability to reuse that instead of having to recreate it from scratch, which saves a lot of time and is basically the most ideal solution for those that are kind of super users and that can explore data on their own. So once they have access to, to the data sets of this report, there are a few different ways that they can tap into that data set for them to explore. So either they can go from the Power BI service and click new report here. So you have this option to pick a published data set. So this will give you some options of from some of the data sets that you have access some access. So you will see here, obviously I have access to all of them, but if someone has shared you a sort of data set access that you will be able to see it from here. And uh, let's say, let's take the fitness tracker. Let's create a blank report. And what it will do is, as you can see here on the right hand side, we have access to all of the rows, all of the tables that makes up the, the reports that uh, we were showing earlier, as well as some of the measures that I have created. So that will let you basically reuse or redo some of the 
analysis without having to do all of the legwork. Leg work. So having access to all of this means that you are able to explore the data yourself without being limited with the views that we have in the current reports without having to do much legwork to get there. Another option that they can do this from is from Power BI Desktop. So when you go to get data, you will have this option Power BI Datasets. And as long as you are signed in to the account where that data set is shared with, you will see that you will have some options here along with your own data sets as well as anything that is shared to you here from this list for you to pick and choose from. For those who are more familiar with the sort of Excel format, you have this option Analyze in Excel, which lets you, instead of having to deal with the Power BI layout, just work with pivot tables within Excel. So from here, when you click Exports within the Power BI service, uh, you can click Analyze in Excel, which will create a live connected report um, to your data set. So here, I'll open the web version of Excel just to show you how that looks like. And here, as you can see, on the right hand side, we have the same list of uh, measures, columns and tables that I have built within that report that you can reuse. One of the key features of Power BI is its ability to connect to multiple data sources and mesh that data together. You have some data that might be coming from a SQL server or maybe some data coming from an Excel file within your local drive or maybe from a SharePoint list. And managing all of these data sources and sharing the passwords and credentials across your team securely can be a challenge, which is where the sponsor of this video, Nord Pass can help you do securely and easily. NordPass is a business password manager that lets you store passwords and credentials securely. Whether it's login details to your third party data sources or server login details for your SQL server, NordPass ensures that confidential information is saved in one place securely and up to date. NordPass also lets you securely share these credentials to other users, departments, or different teams. This way, you never have to worry about sharing notes or memos and worrying about it getting lost or getting compromised. Apart from that, there are other great features that you can take advantage of, like giving or revoking access when people join or leave, monitor access and activity when people log in, or notify you of any security breaches because NordPass proactively scans the web 24 seven for any data breaches involving your online accounts. If you want to try it out for yourself, go to nordpass.com slash solutions abroad and use the coupon code solutions abroad to get a three month, no commitment free trial. Signing up to this takes minutes and it doesn't require any credit cards. So you can just try it out and see how it works for you. The next thing that I want to talk about is how to distribute these reports to your users. Now, earlier, we've discussed workspaces and how to give your team members access to these workspaces by giving them a different roles. And while it might be easy and tempting to give and just share them access directly in these workspaces, that's typically not the recommended way, especially if you're distributing it to a wider audience. I might give one or two people direct access to these reports by sharing them a link or giving them access to the workspace. But the typical solution in terms of distributing reports is by bundling them up into an organization app. So the organization app, not to be confused with the mobile app, is a way for you to bundle various Power BI items like dashboards, reports, scorecards into this sort of one package that is accessible to everyone, that is accessible to everyone. What's great about the org apps is that in addition to being able to bundle up different items together, you can also manage your audiences from there. So giving people the ability to access pages, individual pages based on the audience that is looking in this app. Apart from using an organization app to distribute your reports across your business, I've also had a bit of experience distributing it through PowerPoint. So in PowerPoint, and it's a recent addition to the sort of repertoire of Power BI, is now you can actually import live pages directly into your PowerPoint slides. This lets your users interact with the reports similar to how they would um, within the Power BI service. Another alternative for you is the ability to embed your reports within your SharePoint pages as a web part, which again gives your users the ability to interact with those reports as they would in the service, all through this sort of comfortable layout of SharePoint, if that's what your users are comfortable with. And that's really it for this video. I hope 
hope you are now a little bit more familiar with some of the different ways that you can share and collaborate and distribute your reports within the Power BI service. And I just wanted to say a huge thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video. If you want to try out NordPass business for yourself, simply go to nordpass.com slash solutions abroad and use the coupon code solutions abroad to get the three month free trial. Thanks for watching this video as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.